Hello and welcome to Wealth Whispers, your go-to podcast for a take on the financial world. I'm Derek Gonicky, ready to unravel the mysteries of your wallet's inner voice. Today, we're dissecting the psychology behind our financial decisions with a good dose of humor. Let's jump right in. Let's kick things off with a question. Have you ever caught yourself whispering sweet nothings to your bank account, hoping it'll grow overnight? Or you've scolded your credit card for being too outgoing? Well, you're not alone. Today, we're diving into the often hilarious world of financial self-talk. Our brain is like a non-stop talk show host regarding money. Sometimes it's the voice of reason and other times it's more like that friend who convinces you to buy a treadmill on Black Friday that is now just an expensive clothes hanger. Financial self-talk is that internal dialogue we all have about money. It's the little voice that says, yes, you need that third coffee maker or the stern one that reminds you about saving for a rainy day, which always sounds suspiciously like my grandmother. Now, this self-talk isn't just mindless chatter, and it's powerful. It can make us feel on top of the world like when we finally pay off that credit card, or it can send us spiraling into a pit of despair, like when we check our bank account after a weekend of, let's call it enthusiastic spending. But here's the funny thing, and I mean funny in both the ha-ha and the strange sense, this self-talk shapes our financial decisions. Think about it. Have you ever been in a store debating whether to buy something? One part of your brain is doing a full-on Broadway production about why it's a great purchase. Meanwhile, the other part is like a grumpy accountant, tallying up reasons not to buy, and these internal debates can get pretty wild. I remember once arguing with myself over buying a fancy blender. The pro blender me was convinced it would transform me into a health guru. Spoiler alert, it didn't. The anti-blender me was just worried about the cost and the fact that I still don't know what a kale smoothie is supposed to taste like. So, why do we have these hilarious back and forths in our heads? Well, it's because money isn't just currency. It's emotion, aspiration. It's, well, it's complicated. And our brain tries to navigate this complexity the best way it knows by talking to itself as we move through today's episode. We'll meet the different characters who take the stage in this financial talk show in our heads. From the overly cautious to the wildly optimistic, they affect how we view and handle our money. So stay tuned as we get up close and personal with these characters. You might find they're more relatable than you think. And who knows, you might even get a few laughs out of it. After all, if we can't laugh at our financial foibles, what can we laugh at? All right. Wealth Whisperers, let's meet the cast of characters playing the lead roles in our financial decisions. Imagine your mind as a stage. Each character represents a different aspect of your economic thinking. It's like a sitcom, but instead of laughs, there's bank statements and budget spreadsheets. One, the backseat driver. First up, we have the backseat driver. This character is all about caution. They're the voice in your head that screams, don't buy that. You don't need it. Whenever you reach for something fun, picture them as that friend who always has a coupon for everything and thinks the total price is a conspiracy. Their mantra, save, save, save. They're great for your savings account, but not so much for spontaneous road trips. And two, then there's the defeated. This one is a bit of a Debbie Downer. They are why you might feel guilty every time you splurge on something nice for yourself and that feeling of, I'll never be rich, so why bother saving they're like that Eeyore cloud hanging over your financial parade, always expecting rain. If your bank account could talk, it'd ask the defeated to take a day off. Three, let's talk about the financial fret. Anxiety is their middle name. They're making you check your bank app seven times a day. The financial fret can turn a simple purchase into a Shakespearean tragedy. To buy or not to buy, that is the question. And trust me, their soliloquies are dramatic. They are why you have a love-hate relationship with payday, excited to see the money come in but stressed about where it needs to go. 4. Last but not least, we have the superhero. This character is all about taking financial risks, sometimes too many. They're the voice saying, invest in that stock, what could go wrong? Or start that business on a whim, you're destined for success. They embody financial optimism but sometimes forget that even superheroes need to budget. Each of these characters has its strengths and weaknesses. The key is to keep them from taking complete control of the financial steering wheel. Imagine if the superhero and the backseat driver co-piloted your investment decisions. 
Now that's a sitcom episode I'd love to see. As we navigate our financial lives, we must listen to each of these characters, but take their advice with a grain of salt. And remember, it's okay to laugh at their quirks. After all, they're just trying to help us in their own, sometimes misguided ways. Our following segments will explore even more fascinating characters in our financial narrative. I think you should stick around. It will be a hilariously enlightening ride. Welcome back to the financial sitcom in your head. So far, we've met the cautious backseat driver, the gloomy defeated, the anxious financial fret, and the bold superhero. But wait, there's more. Let's introduce two characters who couldn't be more different if they tried, the optimist and the pessimist. First, meet the optimist. Imagine a character so bright and sunny that they make a day trader in a bull market look gloomy. The optimist is your financial cheerleader, always seeing the glass as half full of premium top shelf champagne. They're the ones urging you to treat yourself because, hey, you deserve it. Are you saving for a rainy day? According to the optimist, it's always sunny in Financeville. They are the reason you bought that expensive gadget on a whim because future you will have the cash. On the other flip of the coin, we have the pessimist. If the optimist is a sunny day, the pessimist is a week of rain without an umbrella. They see a budget cut and think the financial apocalypse is nigh. The pessimist is holding you back from enjoying your hard-earned money, always cautioning about impending doom. Investing? Too risky. That new car? It'll probably break down. They're like that paranoid relative who still buries money in the backyard. The trick with these two is finding a balance. If the optimist had their way, you'd be living large but potentially on the brink of financial disaster. And if the pessimist ruled the roost, you'd be the wealthiest person in the graveyard. The goal is to have the optimist's hopefulness tempered by the pessimist's caution, creating a balanced financial mindset. Imagine a scenario where you're buying a car. The optimist is eyeing the sports model with all the bells and whistles. Meanwhile, the pessimist is calculating gas mileage and insurance costs on a calculator that's probably older than the car. The sweet spot? Finding a reliable car that makes you happy without breaking the bank. In our financial journey, we need both optimism and caution. They're like the salt and pepper of finance. Too much of either, and things get unpalatable. So, Next time you decide financially, invite both the optimist and the pessimist to the table. Just don't let them start a food fight. Up next, we're taking a fun turn. Have you ever wondered what your money would say if it could talk? Stay tuned for some hilarious conversations in our next segment. And we're back. Imagine for a moment if your money could talk. What would it say? Would it thank you for a cozy stay in a high interest savings account? Or would it be dizzy from all the quick trades? Let's enjoy and listen in on these imaginary yet highly entertaining money conversations. One, the chatty credit card. First up is the credit card. If your credit card could talk, it could be a drama queen. Picture it recounting tales of swiping and spending with theatrical flair. Oh, the places I've been, the things I've bought. Remember that time we went on a shopping spree and nearly maxed out? I felt so alive. But it might also have a stern side reminding you of the time you forgot your monthly spa treatment, also known as the payment due date. Two, the wise savings account. Now let's tune into your savings account. This one's probably more of a Zen master, calm and collected. Patience is a virtue. It would say slow and steady wins the race. Your savings account has seen your financial ups and downs, but remains a beacon of stability. Remember when you decided to save for that vacation instead of splurging on yet another Black Friday sale? That was a proud moment for me, it would reminisce. Three, the worldly investment portfolio. And what about your investment portfolio? If it could talk, it might be a seasoned world traveler full of stories about the stock market's peaks and valleys. Ah, the thrill of the trade, the agony of a dip. But what an adventure we're on. You should think long term and stay focused on the daily roller coaster of the market. For the lonely piggy bank. Finally, spare a thought for the often forgotten piggy bank. If it could speak, it might sound lonely and nostalgic. Remember when you were a kid and every coin was a treasure? I miss those days. Now I just sit here gathering dust, longing for the jingle of a penny. These conversations with our money might be imaginary, but they remind us of something important. Each aspect of our finances plays a role in our lives. They have dramas, successes, and quirks just like our financial self-talk sitcom characters. So next time you're making a financial decision, chat with your money, 
maybe not in public. We don't want people to think your wallet is your new best friend. Coming up, we're diving into the psychology behind these money conversations. Why do we think the way we do about money? Stay with me and let's find out. Why do our brains turn financial decisions into a soap opera? It's like every dollar has its storyline. Well, folks, it's time to put on our psychologist hats and explore the theater of the financial mind. One, emotional spending and saving. First, let's talk about emotions. Money isn't just paper and metal. It's a roller coaster of feelings. Have you ever felt that rush of joy from buying something new? That's your brain releasing dopamine, the feel-good chemical. Conversely, saving money might not give you an immediate thrill, but it provides a sense of security and peace, your financial safety net. Two, social influences and money. Then there's the social aspect. We live in a world where spending is often a social statement. Have you ever bought something just because everyone else did, or it was the cool thing to have that social pressure at play? Our brains are wired to belong, which sometimes means spending like our peers, even if it doesn't make financial sense. Three, the power of marketing. Remember to underestimate the power of marketing too. Advertisers are like puppeteers. We're the marionettes dancing to buy, buy, buy. They know how to push our emotional buttons from creating a sense of urgency to playing on our fears of missing out. It's not just about selling a product. It's about selling a lifestyle, a dream. For the comfort of routine. Our brains also love routines and habits. This can be good or bad for our finances. Have you ever walked into a store for one thing and left with a cart full? That's a shopping habit taking over. But on the bright side, once we develop good financial habits like regular saving or investing, they become more accessible to maintain. The fear factor. And let's not forget fear. The fear of losing money can be paralyzing. It's why some people are terrified of investing or taking any financial risk. Our brain's instinct to protect us can sometimes go into overdrive, leading to overly cautious financial decisions. So there you have it. Our brains turn financial decisions into drama because of a mix of emotions, social influences, marketing magic, habits, and fear. Understanding these factors can help us make more rational, less soap opera worthy financial choices. Next, we're wrapping things up with some tips on changing the narrative of your financial self-talk. Stay tuned for the final act of our money drama. And here we are at the finale of today's financial comedy. We've laughed and cringed and now it's time to flip the script on our financial self-talk. How do we turn these dramas into success stories? Let's dive in with some light-hearted yet practical tips. One, humor as a financial tool. First up, always appreciate the power of humor. Next time you're about to make an impulsive purchase, picture the superhero in a cape flying straight into a budget wall. Or when you're too scared to invest, imagine the pessimist wrapped up in bubble wrap, afraid of their own shadow. Laughing at these characters can help you see the absurdity in extreme financial behaviors and guide you towards more balanced decisions. 2. Conversation with characters. Have conversations with your financial characters. Talk to them, maybe not in public. Negotiate with the backseat driver. Reason with the financial fret and sometimes gently tell the optimist to nap. By acknowledging these characters, you give yourself space to make more mindful financial choices. 3. Embrace the learning curve. Remember, making mistakes is part of the learning curve. Laugh at your financial blunders, learn from them, and move on. Turn the superhero loose on the stock market and took a hit? That's a lesson in risk management. Let the pessimist scare you out of a good investment opportunity? That's a lesson in overcoming fear. 4. Celebrate small wins. Celebrate your small financial victories. Have they saved a little extra this month? Pat yourself on the back. Have they finally started that emergency fund? Do a happy dance. These small wins add up and help shift your financial narrative towards success. Five, educate and evolve. And lastly, keep educating yourself. The more you know about personal finance, the more confident and balanced your financial character becomes. They evolve with you, turning from sitcom stars into a well-oiled economic team. So there you have it, folks. We can write a new, more successful financial story by understanding and laughing with our monetary thought characters. Remember, your money should bring you security and joy, not just drama. Before we wrap up, 
I want to extend a heartfelt thank you to everyone tuning into Wealth Whispers. It's your curiosity, your laughs, and your journey toward financial wisdom that make this show what it is. As we close the book on today's episode, I'd like to ask a small favor. If you found value in our humorous journey through the world of finance, please share this episode with your friends, family, or anyone who might enjoy a good laugh with some financial insight. Your shares help us reach more people and spread the wealth of knowledge and the wealth of fun too. And if you have a moment, drop us a review on your favorite podcast platform. Your feedback warms our hearts and helps us improve and bring you content you love. Whether it's a financial topic you're curious about or a funny money story you want to share, we're all ears. Remember, you're not just listeners, but part of the Wealth Whispers family. So until next time, keep those financial thoughts humorous, your wallets happy, and your spirits high. This is Derek Gonicky signing off. Stay savvy, stay smiling.